good, man. Excited to be here. Paul, the place is so different since the last time I was here. I mean, just more stuff. <laughs> more paintings, more books. A lot more paintings, a lot more books. I like the clutter. The book uh, issue never stops. And congratulations on your new child. Oh yeah, we're, I'm excited, man. I, having a girl triggered something inside. Really? Well, mm -hmm. welcome to the club. I yeah. got three of them. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that definitely triggers. Triggers a whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I get lost and confused and say, what the hell do I do with all this emotion? I'll give you a call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when the meditation and the stoic practice <laughs> Yeah. Comes in handy big time. Yeah. They shit test you. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, Laird Hamilton and Gabby both warned me. They said, You're about to go on a ride of your life, baby. Yeah. I said, yeah. Well, good. I like to consider myself a very masculine man. Mm -hmm. One well, of the boys. I think you probably are safe in that consideration. A lot of boys growing up, round boys, my brothers. And then to be surrounded by all women broke me down for a while. Yeah, well. Yeah. God always sets the uh, path for your optimal spiritual development before you even yeah. get here. <laughs> the universe wants people to know more about relationships right now, mm -hmm. or at least the world does. Yeah, well that's been a big theme in my videos lately. A lot of the questions that come from young men have been re revolving around that. So I've just been diving head in. It's one of those areas where I really didn't spend much time thinking because, you know, I've been in a relationship for so long. I just kind of never really explored many of the ideas or the, the questions or the concerns that they're having. Because I, you know, wasn't dating. Relationships are the foundation of everything. Yeah. If you don't have good relationships, you have lots of problems in your life. Yeah. And probably health problems. I was watching a, a bunch of David Wilcox shows mm -hmm. on Gaia. Mm -hmm. And in one of them, he talked about a series of channeled books that were channeled by a physicist. And there's a system they have for rating the authenticity of channeled material and it ranked at 99, 98 or 99%. And since, I think it was like 85 or something that these books were channeled, but since then, many of the things that were conveyed through this series, The Law of One by Ra, mm. have been demonstrated to be true scientifically. So what, the, what they, the beings that they're channeling are the people that built the pyramids. They're the ones that trained the Egyptian priests. And in there, he has a, there's a whole section in the Law of One of how the tarot got developed and why. And they actually mm. share their system for how they trained the priests. And my soul immediately said, this yeah. is what you want to do. So I devoted myself, I would imagine I've been two and a half years now every day and I went through the Egyptian system, which is a very specific system that's very different than anything else out there. And I did extensive meditation, active imagination work, journaling. So I have, I'll show you, I have a, I have a row of journals of every one of my tarot meditations for about two and a half years now. Wow. They're very powerful. So you find these areas, these subjects, and you dive in. How do you master something? Otherwise, you just got a bunch of opinions about shit you don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. Makes you a good Christian. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> or, yeah. or a mother. N not, not. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, most of our parents have all sorts of opinions about what we do without knowing it. Like, mm -hmm. my mother is, you know, just cannot hear anything about the research on psychedelics because she comes from this kind of old Indian concept of you can't get to God using any kind of drug mm. and she doesn't understand the difference between plant medicines and drugs like heroin or something right so um anyhow yeah i'm just fascinated by your how you my focus soul. in on certain certain things and every time i meet you it's like a a brand new area of interest that you've dived into and mm. learned to master <laughs> yeah well usually by the time you're seeing and i've been at it for two or three years mm -hmm. that way i can be authentic about it and not just mm -hmm. be a cut and paste expert, you know, people that read shit and then tell everybody else like it's something mm -hmm. they really know. I, It's important for me to synthesize things in myself. That's how I built the entire Czech system is testing, testing, testing what works in clinical practice, what works in your own spiritual practice. 
and then refine it. You've probably heard me say this, but I say this to my students all the time. Never believe a word I say. Mm -hmm. Go out and test it for yourself. Right. If it doesn't work, come back and talk to me. I'll check your technique. If it's not working, you're doing the right technique. Either it was too evolved for you, or I need to reevaluate that approach. Right. Every single time anyone's come back to me, they were doing it wrong. As soon as I taught them how to do it right and they did it, it did exactly what I said it would. Because I spent years developing things, working with all sorts of clients to refine it to what is practical, what is effective. And then I systematized it so a person can see this person has this problem, they need this approach, these mobilizations, these stretches. You know, you've been through enough of them mm -hmm. to know. And so something like tarot, do, are you learning mainly through reading or do you have a process where you like no, meditate or do you hire experts? No, that's the Egyptian approach. They tell you not to read anything about the cards because <laughs> it'll pre-program your yeah. mind and you'll never really know how to use tarot. Hmm. There's a system that they developed where you take each of the major arcana and you start with zero and then you go one at a time through the major arcana and you meditate on those cards until you actually can embody that archetype within you and begin to have an active relationship with it uh, uh -huh. as a living being. And then it teaches you what it's all about, what the archetype's about, and you go into relationship with it. So, for example, if I'm working with the emperor, he might say, here are ways that you can enhance your business because the emperor is the master of creating in the material world. Or if I'm, say, having a hard time getting deep into my meditation practice for some reason, then the high priestess is the master of the inner world, which is archetype two. Mm -hmm. So once you do the work, the inner work, to actually channel the archetype into yourself, then the archetype interacts with you just like you were sitting there talking to me. But a person has to grow themselves to the point where they can actually work with their inner vision. But that's part of the process. Um, once you do each of them and you record all your meditations, then they start pairing them. So there's functional dualities, like a yin-yang relationship. Then once you get through that process, they put them in groups of three. So you have the power triangle, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. Brahma, Shiva, Krishna. Um, by the time you get through that, you are already deeply enough connected to the archetypes. And so what you find is that there are kind of textbook meanings behind right. them, but those are usually very shallow. Mm -hmm. It would be like saying everybody should do a deadlift. Right. Well, my grandma just blew her back out because she listened to you, right? So there's, you have to get into this relationship with them so they're guiding you. And the card only tells you your soul, your own intuition is what chooses the card. It says in order for you to optimize yourself on this day with the events that are about to occur in your life, you might need tarot 14 temperance you might be dealing with some screaming children, mm -hmm. no matter how small or little they are, mm -hmm. right? Tough clients or something. And so then you can connect to Tarot 14 Temperance and she can say, okay, you know, make sure you remember to breathe when you start getting triggered today. And so you will get guided. So I work this process. Now I don't need the cards. I can just close my eyes and say to my soul, okay, what, what are our cards for the day? Right. And then if I want to go talk to them, I can go talk to them and ask them specific questions. But that's really how they work. But And this process of that you just described was something that you learned? I learned from studying the law of one. Got it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a series of five books. I mean it's you know, I can show it to you. It's not like reading. I mean it's channeled by a physicist, so it gets into everything from how the universe is constructed to quantum physics to it's it's deep man so channeled when you say it was channeled is that uh and you mentioned egypt was it like the pleiadians no it's it's the it's raw so the entity they're channeling uh -huh. is raw which is really essentially the oversoul of the the beings that come from another dimension 
from the fifth dimension, if I remember right, and they came to Earth to do the work to stabilize the planet, mm -hmm. to prepare it for our development. Now, here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Are you, do you know Mar Barbara Marciniak? Mm -hmm. She speaks a lot of what you're just talking about. Here it is, right here. The raw material. Yeah. Would you mind if I took one out to look? Yeah, go ahead. Book four has got the tarot stuff in it, so if you want to... So this is a lot of Egyptian. This is Egyptian stuff? Well, the, remember, it's channeled by a physicist, but right. you can see my notes and yeah. you can see <laughs> the tarot information. And uh, so they, they basically, you know, they're in sessions. They did this for multiple years, so it tells you mm. session number, what day it was, 1982. And it's like they have gone into dialogue with this conscious entity, Ra. And so Ra channels things to them, but the physicist is asking them all sorts of questions, like, how did the pyramids get built? Right. Um, where did the tarot come from? Why is it here? And it's five books of that, and it goes into everything from the structure of the human psyche to, to uh, the creation of the atomic world and the subatomic world to, I mean, it's very deep. It's not, this is not like reading typical ch yeah. channeled fluffy stuff, man. Mm -hmm. This is full on. And like I said, many of the things they said had not been demonstrated yet scientifically, but since then, many things in these books were identified by science. And when was this written? Uh, in the 80s, look at the copyright date in the front. And uh, what, like, what, what's an example of one of the things that came about? Oh, you know, things like 1984. The structure of the universe, or what certain planets are, or, you know, where their what their functions are. The structure of the universe. Atomic structures, or um, there's a lot. You'd have to go through it. I mean, it's really deep. I'm fortunate that I get. Bobcats coming right to my window and staring at me. Yeah. I get coyotes, I get deer in the garden. I got tons of beautiful bird life out here. Is this orgone? It's an orgone generator. You want to try that? Okay. Um, yeah, they're made by a lady named Michelle Hood. They're based on Reich's concepts. Basically, the, the way I would describe what they do is, you know how if you walk into it, if you're moving into a new house and it's got no plants in it, how it feels and then how it feels when you put plants in it? Yeah. Those generate the energy that plants and trees do. Mm. So you, mm. if you, if you were, if the house was completely empty and then I brought one of those in, it would have a very similar to feel if you had it decked out like I do with plants and trees. Yeah. Can you tell me who these are we're looking at? Yogananda is right here. His teacher was Sri Yukteswar. That's the master that initiated him. Lahiri Mahashai was Sri Yukteswar's teacher. Babaji's about 5,000 years old. Krishna is the most ancient in the Hindu lineage. He's considered a god, and that's Jesus. And I love it. So all the self-realization fellowship temple ceremonies begin with a prayer and it starts Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, Paramahansa Yogananda, Sri Yukteswar, Babaji, Krishna, Jesus, Buddha, saints and sages of all religions, we humbly bow to you all. I love it. And that's the day I got there after being in a Christian church, I knew I was right where I was supposed to be. Yeah. None of this bashing and you're mm -hmm. wrong. Yeah. It's a, it's all God. Mm -hmm. And it is. Yeah. And these are people like that I give thanks to David Bohm, the famous quantum physicist, Itzhak Bentov, who was the first one to investigate scientifically how meditation works on the human being and is the inventor of the pacemaker. Arthur M. Young is the inventor of the Bell helicopter and devoted his life to consciousness studies, invested his money in studying consciousness and wrote amazing stuff on consciousness. This is a pile of stuff in here. These are all university courses that I've studied. I won't bore you with the details. But Remember you showing me your Osho notebooks in there. Yeah, well that's uh, Osho's lectures right there. Mm -hmm. So there's about 500 hours of Osho's lectures. I got millions of DVDs and millions is a metaphor, of course, but 
university courses from all sorts of topics. I've got hundreds of my notebooks back there from all my years of studies. And then um, the rest of the, these are all books on health. Right, there you go. That's my notes on my studies of Osho right yeah. there. So there's about 800 pages of handwritten notes. The grand majority of those notes come from studying the lectures though. Because as busy as I was, the best thing I could do is every time I would work out, I would wear my, because like I said, I had a, like a sports cassette player that was for exercising. Mm -hmm. And so I would write my notes on my rest periods. And so for five years, every workout was Osho. Wow. <laughs> and so that's what happened. How do you reconcile that, you know, given that maybe Osho is considered a master? To, I know I have some friends that were, they lived with him. Yeah, I, and, I know uh, many people that lived with to him. To see that I've maybe got, he was wrong. One of my massage therapists was a sannyasin yeah. for nine years living <laughs> with him. Um, I've met probably eight people that lived with him yep. personally. Mm -hmm. um, the answer to your question is, what is a master? A master is someone that knows a lot more than other people. Mm -hmm. But there's always someone that knows more than the master. Got it. And they always had a master. I mm -hmm. just showed you all the masters that were the masters of each other. Yeah, yeah. And so, <laughs> you know, as I often tell people, look, enlightenment is not something that happens to you and then you know everything and you are everything. Mm -hmm. It's an infinite process. Right. It never ends. There's, if you're, if you reach the top of this dimension, there's still a gazillion dimensions beyond the earth plane. Earth is a school, an elementary school for souls. Mm -hmm. When you graduate from earth, you become a citizen of the universe. Well, think how big that is. Yeah. So in each dimension, there's different ways of, there's different ways that God experiences itself. Yeah. We're here in a materially dominated dimension because matter slows down Mm -hmm. Spirit. Yeah. That's what matter is. It's spirit moving slowly enough that you can interact with it. Yeah. <laughs> People keep telling me they're trying to find God. I go, what do you think <laughs> this is? Yeah. <laughs> right? When you look in the mirror, you say, that's me. Well, this is God looking in the mirror at God. That's yeah. what the universe is. You're looking at God's body. And guess what? You're part of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God's looking through your eyes at me. And I'm looking through your, my eyes at you. And it's God looking at God. Mm -hmm. And they keep looking for something. I'm like, if you found something that was God, it would totally destroy the concept of God because then you'd have to come up with some idea about what's bigger and that goes on forever and you get nowhere, mm -hmm. right? My God is bigger than your God. Yeah. It just ends nowhere. Right, it's useless. Right. What are some of the things that maybe you were wrong about uh, that you can look back now and uh, see that? You know, because of my process and, and my earlier work, as you know, was based on anatomy and physiology, None of my courses are outdated. There's not one yeah, thing in them that's, that's wrong because the human body doesn't change that quickly. But there's been lots of things about like, you know, understanding how money works or understanding. Um, I was never caught in a dogmatic spiritual philosophy because I saw the pain of that in Christianity and I yeah. experienced it. So. I don't necessarily think I was wrong about things. I think that I grew my perspective to realize I had limited viewpoints. Mm -hmm. But at the level that I was at, they were very congruent. In other words, um, it's wrong to take most people and start off with core activation or core conditioning like abdominal work right. and then have them doing functional movements because you've just burned their core out. Right. Yeah, I remember you talking about that. Right? That's a wrong approach. But there was a time in my life I didn't know that. So as I did more and more research and worked with my own body, I realized that's not the best approach. Now, if you don't know anything about exercise, at least you're doing something. Mm -hmm. So it's only wrong because you don't know more. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. But at least you're exercising. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if I sat down and really meditated and I could find things I was wrong about, but I, I, I spent my time, energy, and money studying from the very best people I could find yeah. in every area. So I went to the people that had already done all that synthesis. 
So I wasn't getting an academic education where they're telling you a bunch of bullshit that turns out not to be true because right. every research study that comes out says, well, that was wrong. This is true now. Right. You know, I went to the people that spent their entire life sifting through this stuff. So I learned from masters. And then I went from there because where they were limited is they only knew about a disc, but right. they didn't know how it integrated with a uterus right. or testicles mm. or a bladder or a sigmoid colon. So I studied the masters on the organs and the glands. You know, anyhow, my point is that I took the knowledge that each person gave and found where its limitations was and then said, what do I have to do to complete the circle? Right. And so that's the process. So I can honestly look back and I don't remember saying anything I was just wrong about. Yeah. I would just say that my knowledge was only as applicable as the depth of my knowledge about how it applied and, and when it doesn't apply, you know? So I just grew it and grew it and grew it, you know? When you study people like Steiner, you know, you get your head blown off. Yeah. Yeah, my daughter picked up one of my Steiner books and I saw her flipping through it. I said, let me know what you get out of that. It's pretty well, that's, deep. That's very deep, yeah. Yeah. You see the cards are very different than most yeah. the valleys. The angels of fire minerals calcination which is an alchemical principle he's got turned upside down but um the black race so she when you pull that card she in her book she teaches you all about the qualities and the strengths of the black race mm -hmm. the people with black skin and if you pull that card it means you need to integrate those qualities into your life because you're, you're lacking those qualities uh, meditation and this is all, she's got a double numerological system here. So she's using numerological correlations. So you're not only, in this card, you're not only being guided to meditation, but this is a very comprehensive mathematical code. And this woman was like wildly smart. She probably had the equivalent of about eight, P eight PhDs at least. She was an expert in music. She was a master shaman. She was a master builder. She was an expert in geometry. She was a very, very skilled artist. Um, I mean, this, this, this is somebody when you're with them, you're like, how is it possible? It's like being with Rudolf Steiner or somebody. And she's the one that introduced me to art and taught me to do mandala oh. therapy. Okay, yeah, yeah, I remember you mentioning that. Yeah, that's how I got started. You mentioned earlier the significance of, of living today. Do you? feel that there are more masters alive walking the planet today than maybe in previous generations? No, I just think that uh, because we have social media, we can you can talk to someone in China as quick as you can talk to someone next door. Gotcha. So, you know, sort of the thing of today is we know when someone farts in Africa and we can listen to people like Eckhart Tolle or Deepak Chopra with the push of a button, but you, you know, Deepak Chopra is an Indian. What's the chances of someone from the United States meeting Deepak Chopra, right. you know, a hundred years ago? Mm -hmm. Probably never happened. But today, the benefit is, is we can access masters in any, any reality from science to physical therapy, to psychology, to nutrition. Yeah. But the problem is, is they don't all agree with each other. Right. So what happens is you have now this great mass confusion yeah. <laughs> because experts of equal caliber are diametrically opposed mm -hmm. and we now have access to all the negative crap going on in the world and it's right in our face like never before. So it scares the shit out of people Yeah. because now they know the world's about to fall apart. Now they know nature's dying. Now they know that we're going to the Middle East and starting wars to steal oil and it could mm -hmm. be the end of the world if Trump does something like that as an example. Mm -hmm. So we we have massive amounts of access but most people don't have the depth of knowledge to interpret it and to distinguish what do you do when two people you really believe in have opposite ideas right. and how do you synthesize that? And I tell people that's perfect. Yeah. That's great spirit saying to you, it's time for you to actually stop reading and go practice and make up your own mind. Oh, I love it. Instead of daddy shopping. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it is. It's the child all, always wanting a daddy figure to tell it what to do. Right. And that's why diets are so popular. Mm -hmm. Nobody's, very few people are willing to have a relationship with themselves 
and get to know their needs and listen to their body and get specifically guided by the wisdom inside of themselves. Right. So they jump from a, Seer, a Sears diet to a South Beach diet to an Ornish diet to whatever the hell flavor going of the carnivore month. Now. Yeah, well, yeah, because they <laughs> made themselves sick, and that's because they didn't listen. Right. You know, so you know, my approach is there's no such thing as the right diet. You can have three different diets in the same day if you listen to your body. It'll tell you. You could be. You might get told to fast. Mm -hmm. What about my blood sugar? Well, then fast correctly. Mm -hmm. Right. Fast with fasting tea or you know there's a lot of ways to yeah. fast but people are so fucking lazy they don't want to do the work to have a relationship with themselves and they don't want to do the practices that you got to do like you right. can't read books about tai chi and get the benefits of tai chi you got to go do it right. yeah. <laughs> that's the problem but everybody wants to just you know look at an iphone and go i'm a tai chi master now mm -hmm. and a lot of them run around pretending that they are right mm -hmm. and that causes plenty of problems too and the yeah. same thing with shaman We've got all these people calling themselves shaman because they got a pocket full of mushrooms. And believe me, my my uh, email is full of people who got fucked up with yeah. all those shaman. You know, you were the first person I ever met that called themselves a shaman. You know, I'm more, my license is medicine man and spirit guide. If I use that term, it's only to use a term that people can understand. Right. And. I practice what I call modern shamanism, mm -hmm. which is a mix of all the teachings in HLC3, right. 1, 2, and 3, plus working in other dimensions, plus I'm a remote viewer, so I have the abilities that are traditionally ascribed to a shaman, but I don't only use ancient technologies, I use a mix of the best of the modern world and the best of the ancient knowledge to produce a synthesis that's more powerful. You know, there's many limitations to traditional shamanism that can be overcome with current science. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't generally run around telling people I'm a shaman, but I, if someone asks me, I say, yes, I practice such shamanism and I do have those abilities, but my license is medicine man and spirit guide because it's really what I do. I'm probably more of a medicine man in a traditional sense because most of my work is teaching people how to handle their diet and their exercise and getting to bed and mm -hmm. four doctors, right? Have you found it to be a challenge to, to have so many different expertises and so many different areas of interest to narrow your title down? Well, I'm a holistic health practitioner. That's my title. Which means everything. Which means anything <laughs> that's holistic health. Yeah. And the universe set it up perfectly for me mm -hmm. because in California, the basically the scope of practice for a holistic health practitioner is you can do anything that uses natural means to help somebody get better from physical emotional or mental problems mm -hmm. and my medicine man spirit guide is a federal license that allows me to use anything in nature in a healing ceremony from mushrooms to stones mm -hmm. but I it's illegal to use a synthetic, like I can't use LSD or MDMA because those mm -hmm. are manufactured in laboratories. Right. Um, so I don't think it's harder, I think it's easier for me because if you go to a master mechanic, they know exactly what every tool in the toolbox is for and when you should and shouldn't use it. Mm -hmm. But if you give a bunch of tools to a first year mechanic, they'll probably ruin as many cars as they help because they're going to use the wrong tool for the wrong thing at the wrong time right. but it might look really cool oh look at this mm -hmm. you know next thing you know they're snapping off a brake line or something because they're using the wrong wrench yeah. so uh, no I don't think it's challenging at all but you, you have to devote the time to practice or you don't know how to use the tools right so that's that's the process these are Paul's patents on inventions that he's created I remember learning how to use this. She was my a client of mine in about 98 or 99, and then she referred Larry to me, and I've been consulting to him ever since. Uh, this guy, uh, Oscar Bob Garcia, he was Oscar De La Hoya's trainer for, I think, 10 or 11 years, and he's a Czech practitioner. Uh, this guy's a buddy of mine. He has got a world record in Olympic lifting. He's Russian. This is the guy Richard Dunwoody that I rehabbed and brought back to win the triple crown. Oh, time. gotcha. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> oh, 
was just telling Colleen that I think Paul is the most fascinating person I've ever met. <laughs> Can, never ceases to blow my mind with uh, everything he has to say and think about. They could turn the house into a museum for sure. Yeah, I'm just sure. Stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a piece of art that a student of mine, and I've had this happen several times, who came to one of my workshops and I introduced her to mandala work as part of the training and it opened her up as an artist and she has become a mind-boggling artist. Yeah. I've got one at home that she did that is wild hmm. and it's amazing. And she does this, she's a healer, so she uses art as healing. So these are like healing oracles. So like if a person, she does art, like if you have a disease, she'll do a piece of art and when you meditate on it, it'll balance your energy field and help you heal. And she discovered that? She discovered that inside of herself through doing my classes. Wow. And she'd never done art before. And I've got many people that have never done art before that came to my classes and turned out that they were artists and didn't know it. And I get stuff sent to me from all over the world from my students and the art is mind-boggling. I mean, it's good enough to sell. It's really good. <laughs>